Oh God, it's another week of inescapable bull crap. Bull duty. That the universe just had to cram in right before the holiday to make sure that I can't enjoy a single second of peace and tranquility. Hell, I flew back from Florida just for this. Just once. <laughs> I would like to enjoy waking up, heating up a hot cup of coffee and discovering that all is right in the world and there is simply no news to report. But <laughs> alas, this is my curse. Yeah. And this curse has a name and its name is Elon Musk. And after a few weeks of only, I guess, moderate levels of nonsense, the past few days have been utterly ridiculous. Yeah. After blowing an unfathomable amount of money, acquiring a company that by all accounts is now just hanging on by a thread thanks to his decision making, Mr. Musk has gone what I can describe only as full kamikaze. Mm -hmm. And to explain- Thermonuclear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and to explain how things got where they are, it, it starts with a tweet that we briefly mentioned last week. I'm honestly surprised. I thought, it was, oh, that's just Elon being Elon. But I guess this one finally touched nerve yeah. because it has triggered a full on adpocalypse of the scale we haven't seen since the original YouTube adpocalypse. Yeah, rivaled only by, uh, uh, what's his name, the, the one of the Paul brothers, Logan Paul. Right, yeah. and in that case, it was like a problem with the content on YouTube, not the CEO of YouTube yes. co-signing that content. Uh -huh. So last Wednesday on Twitter, someone posted a video by the organization Stand Up to Jewish Hate, a pretty good video showing a dad confronting his son over a bunch of hateful comments he discovered online and driving his son to a synagogue, telling him basically, go say it to their face, tough guy. In response to this, a verified user with 6,000 followers wrote the following, which we will clarify preemptively for the sake of the algorithm, is literally an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. This is reporting on news and having to quote things that are being saying so uh -huh. you get the, the whole scope of what's going on here. So this is what was said. We do not endorse the following quote. Okay, Jewish communities have been pushing the exact kind of dialectical hatred against whites that they claim to want people to stop using against them. I'm deeply disinterested in giving the tiniest shit now about Western Jewish populations coming to the disturbing realization that those hordes of minorities that support flooding their country don't exactly like them too much. You want the truth said to your face? There it is. So this is literally what's called the Great Replacement yeah. Theory. It's a conspiracy theory positing that the Jews are trying to replace white people with non-white immigrants for, I don't know, reasons. Mm -hmm. It's an idea that was previously embraced by Robert Bowers, the guy who in 2018 went into the Tree of Life synagogue in Pittsburgh and murdered 11 people during Sabbath services. So yeah, not good. And just below that tweet that we just quoted, we've got, who's that? Oh, that's Elon Musk chiming in with, you have said the actual truth. Wow, not really mincing words there at all, huh? Not even doing the standard... Uh, Concerning. Well, Interesting. It's Looking into this. It's turned into just uh, two exclamation points. Oh, wow. Everyone look at this. No, he was like, very specifically, you have said the actual truth. The great replacement theory is the truth. I, Elon Musk, approve this Ooh. message. So yeah, this was, of course, followed by lots and lots of Nazis celebrating how cool it is that Elon is on their side. From Vice... Heil Elon, hail our people, one verified X user replied, gaining nearly 1,500 likes. The same user quote tweeted Musk's comment with an image of his face superimposed over Hitler's while giving a Nazi salute. Sieg Heil Elon Musk, defender of the West and its race, wrote another user in reply. Absolutely correct, another user said, and included a video of far-right figure and vocal Hitler fan Nick Fuentes railing against Jewish people on the left and right and the ADL for browbeating us about having a white identity, an argument that closely aligns with Musk's own. Thank you, Elon. Jews flood our nations with foreigners and teach them to hate us, wrote another user with the handle Based AF. This was a big celebration on the social media platform. They were loving it. Yeah. Hashtag our guy. Uh, to no one's surprise but Elon's, this of course alarmed advertisers who have already spent the past year being extremely cautious about advertising on Elon Musk's social network. And in many cases, pulling back entirely. Yeah. Uh, here's the New York Times. More major advertisers have paused their spending on X, the social media service formerly known as Twitter, as the backlash continued over Elon Musk's endorsement of an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory on X. The entertainment company Warner Brothers Discovery and Sony have joined other prominent brands in halting their spending on X. IBM cut off its advertising on X on Thursday, while Apple, Lionsgate, the entertainment and film distribution company, and Paramount Global, the media giant that owns CBS, all paused their ads on Friday. 
The spending freeze comes as X has fought to win back advertisers who were wary of spending on the platform after Mr. Musk took it over a year ago and said he would loosen content moderation rules. Major brands tend to be cautious about placing their ads next to posts with offensive or hateful speech. That, and you could literally, that last sentence, uh, that's it. Anytime mm -hmm. this, this happens in the news, that's all you need to know. There's yeah. no conspiracy. No, this- they, 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 It's as simple as that. They don't want their fucking ads next to Nazi shit. Especially- If you want to make money online, that's pretty much the one thing you have to do. Especially when the CEO, not the CEO, sorry, that's Linda. The, uh, yeah. the, whatever he is, the head honcho at X. Uh, Techno King, I think was his title. Yeah, for whatever. When that guy is not only co-signing it, but like endorsing it. Yeah. And this isn't the first time. What you have said is entirely correct. It's wild. So anything that comes after that, especially stuff that is verifiable visually, and any user can go on and go, huh, let me try that out. And it'll work for them too. Uh, seems to back up the other arguments. And yeah, it's very important to point out that while this advertiser exodus is in response to Elon Musk co-signing an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory to his 163 million followers on the platform that he owns, that's really just the straw that broke the camel's back. Mm -hmm. Since taking over Twitter, he has reinstated a ton of accounts previously banned for flagrant hate speech. He's loosened the rules that got those accounts banned in the first place. He's gutted the moderation teams in charge of keeping hate off the timeline. And he's made it so that any bigot with $8 can have their bigotry amplified by the algorithm. Mm -hmm. And that's on top of Elon's own posting activity, which has involved a whole lot of interactions with accounts known to spread hate and conspiracy theories, as well as, uh, you know, there was a big tantrum back in September when he threatened to sue the Anti-Defamation League for defamation because they had pointed out that hate speech had gone up a lot since he took over. And were they, so they were therefore entirely responsible for Twitter's massive revenue losses because they pointed that out. Yeah. Yeah, well... That objectively true thing that they pointed out, if they had just be, been quiet about it. Things would be a lot things, better financially Twitter for old be, Twitter. Yeah, they'd be, he'd be Scrooge McDuck <sighs> jumping, jumping into his vault full of coins. Well, that lawsuit never ended up happening. But now, in spite of this adpocalypse clearly being the result of several factors over the past year, Elon has decided that the organization Media Matters is responsible for Twitter losing so much money. And for the same reasons as the ADL. They've reported on how much far-right hate content there is on Twitter, and they are therefore primarily responsible for advertisers leaving. Elon posted on Friday, The split second court opens on Monday. X Corp will be filing a thermonuclear lawsuit against Media Matters and all those who colluded in this fraudulent attack on our company. Attached was an image of a document that claims that a recent Media Matters report on hate speech appearing next to prominent ads was based on faulty data. And we'll get into the actual merits of this lawsuit in a minute, but we have to again reiterate that this advertiser exodus is due to a number of factors over the past year, one of which is Elon Musk's own Twitter activity. Uh, TechCrunch sums this up pretty well with this quote from marketing analyst Jasmine Enberg. The damage to X's ad business will be severe, she predicts. A big name advertiser exodus will inspire other advertisers to follow suit, and there is already likely a long tail of less vocal advertisers that have pulled spending. While brands generally understand the risk of running ads against user-generated content, they don't typically find themselves in a situation quite like this, she also points out. Advertisers are accustomed to dealing with brand safety concerns on social media, particularly during periods of political and social tension or war, but they're not accustomed to a platform's owner amplifying misinformation and hate speech and emboldening conspiracy theorists, Enberg notes. The impact of Musk's words poses a major societal danger. Twitter's influence has always been larger than its user base and ad revenues, and while the platform's cultural relevance has declined, Musk and X are still very much a major part of public conversations, he adds. And anyways, as for that lawsuit, the Media Matters article that it's in response to basically just shows ads from prominent companies right above and below tweets featuring pro-Nazi content, which, as the article notes, is contrary to claims from Twitter CEO Lindy Ocarino that brands are protected from the risk of having their ads shown up next to toxic posts. The lawsuit claims that this is defamatory, and Media Matters is just making this stuff up to hurt them financially. And here's TechCrunch breaking down specifically what the lawsuit claims and how much merit there is to them. The lawsuit was indeed filed, but it appears to be missing the promised warhead. The company alleges that Media Matters defamed X having manufactured or contrived the images. 
that it had not found the ads as claimed, but rather had created these pairings in secrecy. Emphasis theirs. Had these images been actually manufactured or created in the way implied by the language here, that would indeed be a serious blow to the credibility of Media Matters and its reporting. But X's lawyers don't mean that the images were manufactured. In fact, CEO Lindy Ocarino posted today that, quote, only two users saw Apple's ad next to the content, which seems to directly contradict the idea that the pairings were manufactured. Yeah, the way they're pitching this is as if Media Matters photoshopped these no. ads right below uh, Nazi posts. And it's they, like, no, you just refresh a couple times and you see yeah. that they're posting next to whatever content is on there. Yeah, it's like they, they created a, or they had an account that was over 30 days old. I guess that's important because ads show up, but they, mm -hmm. they just followed a bunch of Nazi people and hit refresh and saw what ads showed up, which like, yeah, I guess they're gaming the system, but also you literally said that no ads should show up next to those posts. Yeah. And yet here they are. Uh, well, it continues, Media Matters certainly set up the conditions for those ads to appear by using an older account, no ad filter, then following only hateful accounts and the corporate accounts of advertisers. Certainly, the number of users following only neo-Nazis and major tech brands is limited. But the ads unequivocally appeared in the feed next to that content, as Yaccarino confirmed. The lawsuit said that these accounts were known to produce extreme, fringe content, yet they were not demonetized until after Media Matters pointed them out. So X knew they were extreme, but did not demonetize them. That is what the lawsuit expressly <laughs> states. He admitted. So there does not appear to be anything inherently fraudulent or manufactured about claiming those ads appeared next to that content because they did. And it continues, the edge case shown by Media Matters may not be representative of the average user, but it does show something that is perfectly possible on X, and advertisers seem to have quite rationally declined to take that risk. Even ones that weren't mentioned, X's lawyers write. Media Matters manipulation was so severe that companies not even featured in the article also pulled ads from X. Duh. These companies include Lionsgate, Warner Brothers Discovery, Paramount, and Sony. That's probably not true. For instance, Lionsgate specifically said that, quote, Elon's tweet was the reason for their decision to leave. Mm -hmm. The lawsuit filed in the Northern District Court of Texas demands $100,000 in damages and a jury trial, though neither outcome seems likely. No. Uh, <laughs> The legal consensus seems to be that this lawsuit is a long shot. All the lawyers were really yucking it up at like, he's like, I'm walking into the courtroom at the, the stroke of 8 a.m. They're like, buddy, we, no one has like personally submitted a lawsuit in 20 yeah. years. Uh, we do it on can, a computer. You can e-file it right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is that Media Matters is based in DC. Twitter or X I, is based in California or operates out of Nevada. Uh, and they specifically went to this, yeah. the friendliest court they could possibly find right. in Texas. And meanwhile, the attorney general, Ken Paxton, who is on trial for fraud himself. Yeah, yeah a real scumbag. From is now filing a, uh, some, some kind of uh, case against Media Matters as well. So it's literally all working show. with uh, government people to silence a media arm. Yeah. Uh, like that, Under the guise of being a free speech. They're going to have trouble even uh, like locking down this jurisdiction though because I, I think I saw that like Twitter in their like TOS because they're they're alleging like essentially a TOS viol uh, thermonuclear TOS violation but like yeah. they say that like all of the, they they operate in the California courts yeah they're based in California but a reason they're not doing it in California is because California has pretty strict anti slap rules yeah. like if you file frivolous lawsuits you can be held liable mm -hmm. And this lawsuit uh, seems to be pretty frivolous based on every yeah, legal this opinion I've seen of it. It's a threat. Yeah. Um, Spurious. Yeah, it is uh, bizarre. And yeah, it's just like he is trying to pivot his own words and actions away from himself and the attention he's getting to a company who was just like, hey, by the way, yeah. ads are still showing up next to extremely hateful content. A hateful content that uh, M Musk himself seems to be replying to and yeah. and uh, uh, that's boosting. It. And that's why like the advertiser, like it would be one thing if- If this it, was happening in a bubble, like right. away from everything. The advertisers are not reading a media, mat like a single Media Matters article and being like, oh my God, Turn off the ads. No, they, they're, uh, you know, these are human beings. They're smart people and they're being like. They've been watching this it, for months. Yeah, you know, they've been paying attention to this for over a year now. Yeah. Closely paying attention to it, pulling their ads back quite a bit just to feel things out. It, the, if it weren't for the fucking head guy at the company doing shit like this on a consistent basis, do you think 
that these advertising companies would pull advertising at the most crucial time of the year, the lead up to Christmas. Like this is when they get their shit all done. So yeah, like true. It, they would they would have to have a pretty fucking good reason. Well, I think it's it's also just advertising on Twitter has never been it's not a, especially it. fruitful. I mean, advertising in general online, like the the metrics for it are like insane. It's yeah. it's insane that it even exists as a business, but it's like, yeah. well, you you gotta advertise. But does it work? Not really. The, but you the, gotta do it. Another <laughs> funny kind of self own was happening. I, it was before the lawsuit was filed. I think it was before the lawsuit was threatened. But it was Musk, you know, you know, charging up his army yeah. to support him and go, listen, here's the one thing you can do. You can become a whatever it's called now, Twitter X plus premium, X premium, whatever, plus. and you'll never see ads. And I, I love that, like, one of the top comments I saw from the first unverified person, because all those flow to the top, was like, well, if I just wait long enough, there won't be any ads on this website anyway. da 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 <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so... The, again, legal consensus, long shot. But in the meantime, Twitter is losing out on a ton of ad revenue. So in order to keep the site afloat, a bunch of right-wing accounts are pledging to buy ads. Does anyone I see- I will buy the ads. Does anyone see what's happening here? It's It should be obvious to anyone what's happening here and who this site is catering towards. It's be, it's become the rumble or no, it's the, the gab it's, it's or whatever. The new gab, yeah. Yes, but they they have an inherently big user base just based on the site pre-existing for a yeah. decade. Um, and and the ads that you see now anyway are all fucking garbage. Yeah, the new one is uh, just straight up fake Rolexes with like the Rolex logo yes. on them. Yes. It's it's amazing. Um, but anyways, here's Mashable. On Saturday, Seth Dillon, CEO of conservative satire website Babylon B, announced that his company would be spending $250,000 to advertise on X in order to support free speech. Dillon's support for Musk shouldn't be a surprise. Babylon B's suspension on then Twitter was one of the reasons why Musk was interested in acquiring the social media platform to begin <laughs> with. Shortly after, YouTuber Tim Pool also pledged to spend the same amount on X ads over the next few months. Uh, <laughs> this is all so performative and probably not even actually happening. Yeah. Like, in, in, in the the first time, the big explosion of ad revenue that all of these prominent accounts got, and this was supposed to be a great example of the kind of monetary value you can get out of Twitter. They're just giving back the money that Elon gave them. But not even. Them. Tim Pool got like $6,000, which for Tim Pool's reach on YouTube is like literally nothing. Yeah, he gets that on like one yeah. shitty video. And and he gets 5,000 from Twitter the first time, the biggest yeah. explosion of ad revenue, and goes, you know what? I'm gonna pay back, I'm gonna pay this forward. I'm gonna give Elon Musk $250,000. If that actually does happen, it's literally just to push this website further to the fringe and not a, yeah. I'm doing this for free speech kind of thing. Doing this for attention. It continues, yeah. soon more right-wing media figures and companies followed with pledges of their own, albeit much less than the amounts that Dylan and Poole were promising. Political commentator Benny Johnson, for example, pledged $50,000 in ad spending. Other right-wing creators like The Quartering, Donut Operator, Gavin McGinnis, and Elijah Schaefer pledged smaller amounts ranging from $2,500 to $40,000. The controversial Andrew Tate, a Manosphere influencer who has previously been charged with rape and human trafficking, pledged the largest amount, saying he'd give Musk $1 million per month without even running ads for his own <laughs> endeavors. I will advertise X on X. I will literally promote your own platform on this platform, wrote Tate. One million USD a month. You don't need other advertisers. Simply let me know where to pay at Elon Musk. None of this is happening. No, absolutely not. It's attention. Yeah, that's all it is. They're buying attention, and they're yeah. not even paying anything for it because this is all just hypothetical. Also, they're they're doing that that popular celeb thing. They're pledging. Yeah, they're pledging their money, uh -huh. which and is different than giving. Your as money. I think we'll get to, uh, th these uh, big uh, performative donations, essentially, to Elon Musk, the world's second richest man or so. It's some some real simp behavior. This is the most simp behavior. You're you're. <laughs> You're telling everyone how you're going to give the world's, let's say for the sake of argument, he's he's probably number two or three at this point, but the world's richest man, I mean, he's a, a bunch of your money. He's a paper billionaire. True. But, but uh, and also as we'll get to, this is not even, yeah. not even the tiniest notch in the gaping hole of their ad revenue. Yeah. So yes, it is funny. For a lot of reasons. First off, it's a great way to guarantee that big ticket advertisers stay the hell away from that website. 
You think I'm going to go near the website that Andrew Tate yeah. is just giving a million dollars to a month? Yeah, oh, uh, before it was bad enough when our ads were showing up next to posts from Nazis. Now our ads are showing up next to other ads Yeah. from Nazis. Yes, so prominent hmm. Nazis. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Secondly, as Mashable points out, as of publishing, a total of eight right-wing media figures and groups have pledged... $1,627,500 in ad buys on X. Hey, impressive, right? Wow, that's, that's a, a lot, lot of money. money. Yeah. That includes Tate's possibly unserious <laughs> offer, which is the majority of it. <laughs> yes. In addition, the majority of those pledges are over the course of multiple months, so that amount is not per month. To compare to the amount X has lost from fleeing advertisers, Apple alone reportedly spends more than $100 million per year on X ads. Looking at it more broadly, advertising made up 90% of the $5.1 billion that then Twitter made in the year before Musk took over. Sounds like they really need advertisers. Sounds like they should probably uh, be doing things to ensure that advertisers find their platform to be a safe place to post their ads. I don't know, I'm no website businessman, but if I was, that would be, that would be the thing, especially, you know, I might even bring a, a new CEO into the fold who specializes specifically in advertising. Someone with decades of experience yeah. uh, in I the bet advertising. They, I bet they would agree with what I just said about how if your business depends on advertising for like 95% of its revenue, you want to keep the advertisers happy. That's just me. I'm not a rocket scientist. Neither is Elon, but he has rockets, so. Well, they do keep blowing up. So yeah, it doesn't sound like uh, these donations are really going to help much. In fact, it'll probably make things worse. But with all this Elon talk, we should really check in on his second-in-command, CEO Linda Yaccarina, one of our favorite new characters from this past year. Yeah, love a good girl boss. New character of the year, I would say. Mm -hmm. when well, Elon... the orcas are pretty high up there. Well, that's like that's not a character. That's a, a force <laughs> of nature. So when Elon was boosting the Great Replacement Theory last week, uh, at that very moment, she was literally at her daughter's wedding. One of the most important moments of her life. And this shit show probably ruined her day a, a little bit. Maybe I would a assume, lot. yeah. Maybe a whole lot. Probably a big deal. Might have just ruined the whole fucking night. Yeah. Uh, her first response the following day was, quote, hot dog. <laughs> no, sorry, wrong. I got I got it mixed up. I got the Linda tweets mixed up. That, speaking of favorites, that's my favorite screenshot of the year, probably. <laughs> <laughs> she did not say hot dog. Sorry, here's the tweet. X's point of view has always been very clear that discrimination by everyone should stop across the board. Please stop. I think that's something we can and should all agree on. When it comes to this platform, X has also been extremely clear about our efforts to combat anti-Semitism and discrimination. <laughs> There's no place for it anywhere in the world. It's ugly and wrong. Full stop. And yeah, of course, the, you know, the replies are just full of people asking Linda if the site's owner is aware of anything she's saying. Because there does seem to be, they, they seem to be at odds with each other. Yeah. X is no home to anti-Semitism, except the anti-Semitism that the owner of X posts. That, that stuff's okay, but it doesn't count. It, it's almost spiteful that Elon would make such an anti-Semitic tweet on the eve of her daughter's yeah, wedding no, day. Yeah, like, I, I, I've been really coming around on Linda, like, the past few months, and I genuinely, like, I, I'm pissed She's in an abusive relationship with Elon Musk. I am pissed on, on her behalf. Yes. Like, this is <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. Like, she seems like a nice lady. Whatever. I don't know. I can't, ex I can't extend her that much grace because she refuses to do anything substantial to combat she, this, but... She must have some fucking deal in her contract that says if she quits before... A like, certain time, A yeah. certain time, she misses out on a bunch of money. Because yeah. other, I think, like, I imagine they were having a tough time when they were doing that job hunt, yeah. finding anyone willing to be, like, CEO in name only yeah. and just be the whipping boy. And, uh, yeah, I think they had to probably sweeten the deal for Linda and just be like, okay, you get, like, $20 million well, if, you just, gotta, if you just uh, don't quit. We got to look back uh, after the video and like see what day she was officially hired, and then look at uh, six months, uh, twelve months, sixteen months. Like see, like, and I, I guarantee you, like the day that that happens, one of those days, we'll know. We'll, we'll know a, when we know. A and mutual it, separation between the parties. It might be sooner rather than later. It might just be till the end of twenty twenty three. She yeah, yeah. might, she might, oh, resign on January first. Who the hell knows? I did a lot of uh, soul searching this Christmas, yeah. and I have made the very tough decision to uh, take the next step in my career. My daughter and son-in-law yelled at me all Christmas Eve yeah. for ruining their wedding, yeah. so I have taken the... Oh, uh, he's probably got <laughs> one in the oven right now to cook. 
It's cooking for uh, Christmas Eve, Elon Musk, just to ruin everyone's holiday. Yeah, and when she does eventually quit, you know he is going to, he's going to, he's going to make her hurt for it. Oh, yeah, no, it'll be all her fault. He's going to start immediately talking. You thought shit. Media Matters was trying to take this company yeah, down? We should it was actually sue Linda. It was actually Linda the she whole a, time. She was a sleeper agent from, uh, of course, what's the Illuminati group that she's with? The uh, Davos. Uh, oh, the World Economic Forum? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was a WEF mole. Yeah. Uh, she was a mole for the advertising community to help them take down Twitter. Anyways, this crisis, yeah. it has to be especially annoying to Linda, given that her background is literally in advertising. She was clearly brought on board specifically to improve Twitter's advertising situation. She'd be the fall gal. Yeah, mm -hmm. and apparently a lot of Linda's colleagues back in the old ad business are telling her straight up, it is time to get off this sinking ship. Not even telling her, <laughs> begging, please, Linda, you, we've known you for years. Yeah. Please, what are you doing? Uh, from CNN. A groundswell of advertising executives have urged ex-chief executive Linda Yaccarino to resign from her role at the embattled social media company in the wake of an advertiser exodus and scrutiny over Elon Musk's anti-Semitic remarks on the platform, according to marketing industry veteran Lou Pascalis. I sent her a text yesterday and after thinking about it long and hard saying that, Pascalis, the founder and chief executive of marketing consultancy AJL Advisory, told CNN on Monday, adding that other members of the industry had done the same. My advice was to leave before her reputation was damaged. Too late. She thinks quitting is failing. She believes that she can mother Elon Musk into someone who could be respected by the <laughs> advertising community. And that ship has definitely sailed, Pascalis said but she's not going to come off the mechanical bull without all of us telling her it's time to go. And I believe that there has been a groundswell of a lot of people such as myself saying, save yourself. And I think it was Forbes, like literally, they're like, yeah, we talked to a bunch of these executives. None of them wanted to be quoted, but yeah, they're all calling her. They're all begging her to fix this. This is just like the time we had the company outing down at Saddle Ranch and she wouldn't get off that mechanical bull. Linda had had way too many to drink. I bet she loves riding the mechanical bull. I bet she's really good at it. Yeah. She seems like that kind of party girl. We couldn't get her off that mechanical bull. She was having a great time at the mechanical bull at her daughter's wedding. Yeah. She was going for the record. And then her phone fucking buzzed with the special ringtone she has for Elon. It's like, yeah. Elon, Elon, Elon. <laughs> Elon did an oopsie. And then she got thrown from the bull. Yeah. Well, time to take that bull by the horns. So yeah, very exciting stuff. Uh, will Twitter survive the year? Probably, but uh, it's what, not, it's what, not what, looking good. But what good. will be left of it? It is not looking good. Like, it is, where uh, do they get money? Where does the money come from? It's crazy going on there now, and there has been a noticeable exodus of normal people where you're just seeing the most extreme content and then yeah, the worst ads you've ever seen. Yeah, it's like fucking sub Sky Mall tier yeah. ads. Ads for like shit that's like literally illegal. There was a while where one of the ones going around was for like a, a collapsible baton that is illegal in like yeah. most states and like a pair of brass knuckles that you can hide as like a ring. Yeah. Um, obviously, yeah, fake Rolexes. Just all this like weird fucking shit that would probably get you sued. Yeah. Well, anyways, sounds like Twitter is going great. And with that all out of the way, though, there's actually multiple other big tech companies currently going, going through their own existential crisis. But before we get into the chaos currently unfolding at OpenAI and Cruise RoboTaxis, it's time to let you know that this episode is sponsored by Mint Mobile. Give yourself the gift of insane savings this holiday season with Mint Mobile's best wireless deal of the year. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three-month plan, you'll get another three months for free. That's six months of premium wireless service for the price of three. Mint Mobile lets you order and activate from home while saving tons on phone plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. Seriously, I cannot think of a better gift than turning an overpriced wireless bill into just 15 bucks a month with Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile's best offer of the year is here. For a limited time, buy any three month plan and get three more months free. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily and effortlessly with eSIM. Or if you need a new device, for a limited time, get six months of free service when you buy a select device and plan. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. For a limited time, buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months for free by going to mintmobile.com newsday. That is mintmobile.com newsday. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com newsday. 
All right, let's talk about OpenAI. Woo, a saga that has been like watching an entire season of a well-paced drama all weekend long. It's, it's stupid succession. Yes. Or maybe it's not so stupid. I don't know. It's happening very quickly, though. Nobody really knows what's going on. It's fascinating. It seems like nobody, yeah, nobody knows what they want. Uh, nobody knows who's exactly responsible. Nobody knows who even runs this company. And when you see the org chart, you, it, yeah, you'll be confused, too. Yeah. So, yeah, OpenAI is, of course, one of the hottest brands in the business in this current artificial intelligence boom with products like ChatGPT and Dolly dominating the LLM and text-to-image marketplaces. But they were around for several years before those products blew up, and for most of that time, Sam Altman has been at the helm. But he's not anymore. Uh, the guy who's been the face of the company during this massive period of growth was unceremoniously ousted on Friday, and OpenAI now seems to be in a state of chaos and mutiny. Uh, initially, it seemed like Altman must have done something really, really bad to get kicked out of the company that he'd made basically synonymous with AI. Yeah. Uh, but the reasons actually seem to have more to do with OpenAI's bizarre corporate structure, uh, and ours technically explains here. OpenAI has an unusual structure where its for-profit arm is owned and controlled by a nonprofit 501c3 public charity. Prior to yesterday, that nonprofit was controlled by a board of directors that included Altman, Brockman, Ilya Sutskever, and three others who were not OpenAI employees. Adam D'Angelo, the CEO of Quora, Tasha McCauley, an adjunct senior management scientist at Rand Corporation, and Helen Toner, director of strategy and foundational research grants at Georgetown's Center for Security and Emerging Technology. Now, only Suitsgiver, D'Angelo, McCauley, and Toner remain. And if that's confusing, well, here's a visual org chart that won't really help. Nope, that's fucking weird. Uh-huh, but basically the people at the top who have the power to fire the CEO are mostly people with no actual equity in the company. They run a nonprofit, a subsidiary of which is a potentially very profitable company, and the nonprofit people are at odds with the for profit people about the direction OpenAI is going. Uh, Ars Technica explains a bit further. On Friday, OpenAI fired CEO Sam Altman in a surprise move that led to the resignation of President Greg Brockman and three senior scientists. The move also blindsided key investor and minority owner Microsoft, reportedly making CEO Satya Nadella furious. As Friday night wore on, reports emerged that the ousting was likely orchestrated by chief scientist Ilya Sutskever over concerns about the safety and speed of OpenAI's tech deployment. This was the board doing its duty to the mission of the nonprofit, which is to make sure that OpenAI builds AGI that benefits all of humanity, Sutskever told employees at an emergency all-hands meeting on Friday afternoon, as reported by the information. Since its founding, OpenAI has pursued the development of Artificial General Intelligence, or AGI, which is a hypothetical technology that would be able to perform any intellectual task a human can do, potentially replacing a large number of humans at their jobs. Internally at OpenAI, insiders say that disagreements had emerged over the speed at which Altman was pushing for commercialization and company growth, with Sutskever arguing to slow things down. Sources told reporter Kara Swisher that OpenAI's Dev Day event on November 6, with Altman front and center in a keynote pushing consumer-like products, was an inflection moment of Altman pushing too far, too fast. So, sounds like despite OpenAI being at the forefront of an AI revolution, uh, OpenAI's board thinks that things are moving way too fast in a way that benefits investors more than it benefits society. And they're probably right. But understandably, everyone at OpenAI who stood to make a fuckload of money off how things were going is pissed. OpenAI's president and co-founder Greg Brockman, along with three senior researchers, quit in the wake of Altman's firing. OpenAI's investors demanded that the board reverse its decision. 95% of OpenAI's employees threatened to quit unless Altman was brought back and the entire board was, was replaced. Um, Sam Altman and Greg Brockman were immediately hired by Microsoft, who was blindsided by the firing, despite being heavily invested in OpenAI and, of course, using GPT to power its Bing AI chatbot. It was chaos this weekend. But Altman and Brockman also say that they're open to coming back if the board members quit. And it seems like the whole clusterfuck actually might end up getting reversed this week. Maybe. Here's Bloomberg. Sam Altman, members of the OpenAI board and the company's interim chief executive officer, have opened negotiations aimed at a possible reinstatement of the ousted CEO at the artificial intelligence startup that he co-founded, according to people with knowledge of the matter. Discussions are happening between Altman, CEO Emmett Shear, and at least one board member, Adam D'Angelo, said the people, who asked not to be identified because the deliberations are private and they may not come to fruition. 
The talks also involve some of OpenAI's investors, many of whom are pushing for his reinstatement, one of the people said. There is a push to resolve the chaos surrounding the company's leadership before Thanksgiving, said one person, in the hope that employees don't spend the holiday with uncertainty looming around the state of their jobs. So yeah, this all might end up just being a, a big misunderstanding. We had an oopsie. Whoops. Yeah. It was just a goof. Yeah. They did it as a goof. But uh, in the meantime, the guy currently filling the role of interim CEO at OpenAI is a, is a guy named Emmett Shear, mm -hmm. who was a co-founder at Justin.tv, which eventually became Twitch, which he was the CEO of until this past March for over a decade. Yeah. And his stances on AI are right there out in the open on social media. As and well he, as some very strange Harry Potter fan fiction. Well, he, he's in the fan fiction, <laughs> yeah. but he didn't write the yeah. fan fiction. But yeah, he's, he's been open about how he feels about AI. It's right out there on the timeline. And uh, yeah, seeing his posts, it definitely provides a hint for maybe why he was offered the job. Uh, here's Vice. Shear's posts reveal he is a self-declared AI doomer and safetyist who wants to slow AI development, explicitly breaking with the effective accelerationists, or EACs, of Silicon Valley who want to charge ahead as fast as possible with minimal concern for regulations. I'm a doomer, and I'm basically EAC on literally everything except the attempt to build a human-level AGI. Shear wrote in an August post replying to a user who referred to doomerism, the belief that a sufficiently powerful AI or artificial general intelligence could destroy humanity as primitive. He added in a follow-up post that AGI is a pit trap with spikes we have to avoid while navigating towards the North Star of progress. This is not hard stuff to understand. Believing AGI is dangerous simply does not equate to primitivism. In another post, Shear referred to himself as an AI safetyist. Techno-optimism doesn't run counter to AI safetyism at all. At least not any of the AI safetyists I know, including myself. Shear posted in a July thread where another user argued that EAC ideology is morphing into simple tech optimism. I'm a techno-optimist who also believes there's a chance an human-level AGI will be catastrophically dangerous. Shear posted a chart on November 18th explaining what being an AI doomer or safetyist currently means to him. A doomer is someone who wants to slow down capabilities research, while a safetyist wants to regulate to require safety and anti-bias. I specifically say I'm in favor of slowing down, which is sort of like pausing, except it's slowing down, he said in September. If we're at a speed of 10 right now, a pause is reducing it to zero. I think we should aim for a one or two instead. In June, Shear praised Meta for not making cutting edge frontier models and staying well within established bounds of safety. He said it is, in many ways, the only company taking AI safety truly seriously. Uh, he also said of effective acceleration, which, by the way, ex effective acceleration is the ideology behind our old pal Mark Andreessen's belief that slowing down AI is literally murder. Uh, it's basically, uh, you know, if you stop this development, you are responsible for all of the lack of progress, or the progress that would have happened, you, you're stopping that. So it's, it's fucking stupid. You'll have blood on your hands. It's, it's basically, it's a way for people to uh, justify being as ruthlessly capitalistic as possible now because, you know, the results won't, you, will exonerate me. Anyway, yeah. he said of that, EAC, the movement that rejects reality and wants to proceed in the most convenient and self-enriching way regardless of the real world consequences of their actions. Yep. Checks out. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, Emmett Shear's leadership of OpenAI, it would represent a pretty significant turning point for the world's biggest AI company. But then again, by the time this video goes up, he might not even still have the job anymore. Yeah, we, it's changed on the hour every hour. So by the time this goes up, you might know more than us, but this is where we stand as of Tuesday night. So yeah, I guess we'll see how that all shakes out. Well, this I, I look at this in the simplest- They should give the, the job to Chat GPT, you know? I think so Stand too. Stand by your product. Constantly proving that uh, executives are the replaceable ones. Yeah. But I think that what this probably boils down to is a simple, a very financial decision of every employee who is putting their career's work into this and have watched over the past 15 years as everyone gets their giant golden parachute or yeah. a buyout or something and, and goes, I'm rich, I can do whatever I want now. And they ha they're going up against a board who's like, hey, we have to be careful here. And the other people who are all supporting uh, 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 Sam Altman are like, buddy, we're supposed to be fucking yeah. rich right now. Yeah, I'm only doing this. This is the biggest <laughs> year for ChatGPT or for our company yeah. overall, OpenAI. Why aren't we like making more off of this? 
Yeah. It's, and uh, so I, it's a, clearly a huge civil war inside that company. Yeah. And I mean, it is interesting. The, the way this company is set up is fucking insane. But also, like, when they, they when they started, like, there was no, they were just fucking around with, like, AI technology. It was yeah. literally as a nonprofit of just, like, you know, we're going to get the best minds around to, like, experiment with this stuff. And uh, by the time, like, GPT got good enough and they made ChatGPT, they're like, oh, fuck, we could make a lot of money off this. Yeah. And that just completely changed this company's trajectory. Yeah, it's been fascinating to watch uh, just everything that's been happening. Because all it's it's a massive company with massive implications. And it's been running around like its head's cut off for the past four days. with, And every solution that people have come up with seems to be the wrong one or one that isn't being adopted. Yeah. He was... He was back and forth from being in charge like two or three times, allegedly, online. Yeah, it was a very confusing couple of days. And now the, the old Twitch CEO's in there. Sure, why not? Dab. But Tap anyways, up. for our final story today, yeah. uh, the company behind those robo-taxis up in San Francisco that everyone hates, <laughs> Cruise, they're, they're having their own turmoil right now, mm. seemingly thanks to the fact that... Uh, all the government agencies in charge of actually regulating what they do are becoming increasingly alarmed by the dangers of driverless taxis. Somebody's finally looking into this. Uh, here's 404 Media. The federal government is unaware of how many incidents there have been between cruise autonomous vehicles and pedestrians in San Francisco, in part because it does not have a good way to collect public complaints of unsafe autonomous vehicle driving, internal emails obtained by 404 Media show. Last month, California ordered cruise driverless cars to stop operating in the state after a cruise vehicle dragged and injured a pedestrian in San Francisco. Cruise later recalled all its vehicles. In the aftermath of that incident, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration launched a preliminary investigation into the company's cars, and specifically, four incidents in which cruise cars either hit pedestrians or almost hit pedestrians. These include the infamous dragging incident. The woman was initially hit by another car with a human driver. Then it was hit and dragged by the cruise vehicle. Another incident in which a pedestrian was struck, as well as videos of two incidents posted on Reddit. In one of those videos, a cruise vehicle accelerates into a crosswalk while two children and two women are slowly crossing. Crews in front of me yesterday illegally went through a stop sign and nearly ran over two moms and their kids, which is particularly notable considering that The Intercept reported that cruise vehicles struggled to detect children. Mm, seems important. The NHTSA's initial report says, currently, the total number of relevant pedestrian incidents is unknown. Hmm. And now Cruz's CEO and one of its co-founders are stepping down. It's just, it's in the weather. Mm -hmm. All these CEOs, they're, they're loud quitting. Yes. The era of quiet quitting is over. Uh, here's The Verge. Two years ago, General Motors presented a vision for the future that involved zero crashes, zero traffic, and zero emissions. Today, that future seems further away than ever. The automaker's driverless car subsidiary, Cruise, announced last night the resignation of Kyle Vogt as CEO. The decision came over a month after an incident in which a hit-and-run victim became pinned under a cruise vehicle and then was dragged 20 feet to the side of the road. As a result, California Department of Motor Vehicles suspended Cruise's permit to operate driverless cars in the state. The company subsequently paused driverless operations nationwide, appointed a new chief safety officer, recalled all 950 of its vehicles, and retained an outside group to perform an independent safety audit. And the resignations may not be over. Dan Can, a co-founder of Cruise and the, and the company's chief product officer. Dan Can! Who can do it? Dan Can! Dan Can is stepping down, according to a source with knowledge of the events. A spokesperson for the company confirmed the departure. Dan cannot! <sighs> well, anyways, it sounds like what's happening at Cruise is similar to what's happening at OpenAI. The people in charge, in this case General Motors, are realizing that the fast pace of Silicon Valley maybe isn't the right approach to technology, that has the potential to kill people. From the New York Times a few weeks back, company insiders are putting the blame for what went wrong on a tech industry culture, led by the 38-year-old Mr. Vock, that put a priority on the speed of the program over safety. In the competition between Cruise and its top driverless car rival, Waymo, Mr. Vock wanted to dominate in the same way Uber dominated its smaller ride-hailing competitor, Lyft. Kyle is a guy who is willing to take risks, and he is willing to move quickly. He is very Silicon Valley, said Matthew Wansley, a professor at the Cardozo School of Law in New York who specializes in emerging automotive technology. Is that what they call it, the Cardozo? Yeah, he was uh, nominative determinism. Yeah. That both explains the success of Cruz and its mistakes. Yeah, the move fast break things uh, model Does doesn't not, really work. Yeah, when, it's not a fucking website. These are when, cars that are sharing the road with people. Yeah, when break things means killing humans, it uh, gets a little more serious. 
yeah, it, it is interesting. Like the yeah, the cruise story and OpenAI, they there's a lot of parallels there, and it's just yeah, uh, they people even people who are really keen on this technology and the potential that it has are just like, hey, maybe maybe we'll just pump pump the brakes just a little little bit. Yeah, but then Mark Andreessen, and he's like, nah, you're a murderer. I mean, I'm reading a book right now about uh, one of the chapters about Coca-Cola, and one of the top executives at Coca-Cola. He was in charge of marketing, mm-hmm. and he went around the world and started seeing how fat kids were getting, <laughs> specifically where they were targeting the marketing yeah. and stuff like that. He grew a conscience, and then he was like one of the ones that in, uh, introduced like Dasani and some more like okay. better drinks. Immediately fired. Yeah, fired. Yeah. You're gone. Can't have that. It uh, tastes good. Everyone loves sugar. Yeah. Come on, ramp it up. Uh, there also, will be no long-term consequences to what we do. I had a great robot experience while I was home in Florida. Oh no, they got robots there? Robot waiter at this restaurant. I First of all, I wanted to leave, but I was with my parents. I was yeah, like, I'm no, not gonna fuck this. fucking do it. Do anything. you have to tip the ra- the robot waiter? I don't think so. Well, there was a human waiter too. It was, it was bizarre. Anyways, this the the funny experience, It so basically the robot waiter just brings the food out mm-hmm. and then it goes back to its little hole or whatever. Okay. And then the regular waiter takes your order and all. It, anyways. Confusing. That's it weird. Seems, it seems like it was deployed. The, the thing that I thought was, I was like, this was deployed out of spite. Because people probably asked for a living wage here. And yeah. they're like, you're going to be replaced by robots and we're actually going to fucking do it. Usually so- it's in reverse, though. I've seen it like at like Applebee's and shit like that. Like some of them. Oh, get- they put the things on the table. Yeah, you, you can, can order from a touch screen at the table, but they, a human still brings you the food. So, so what you're describing is the opposite. Yes. And the ma- makes even less sense. Here's what happened, though, right when I walked through the door of this place. First of all, I look around, I see this robot, and I'm like, oh, this is so fucking stupid. It's got plates of food on it and everything. It makes a corner around, the, there's bar top tables and booths. And it's going between the bar top tables and the booths. And this older couple, one of them has oh, no. a cane, oh, is no. walking towards it. And they both get in a showdown, and there's nowhere for either of them to go. And the old couple is obviously intimidated by this yeah. thing. It's it's blasting yellow lights and everything, like, hey, get out of the way. It's backing up, trying to maneuver. They're both confused. The people are sitting there staring at their food, doing a dance with these <sighs> other people. Finally, they just back away, and it rolls up to the table, and they just wait for it, the people to take their food You off. are morally obligated to kick robots. I wanted them. to not... If my parents weren't there, and I was like, all right, I'll catch a charge for fun. Yeah. I wanted to knock this thing over so fucking but- bad. There was a lake behind this restaurant. I wanted to throw it in the fucking lake. Yeah, it's, it, it's where it belongs. I didn't do it, but I, the thought did cross my mind. You know, it's, it's totally... You, you're allowed to steal plates off of the, <laughs> the robot. Um, just a... I was like, first of all, I'll never come here again because I don't live here. But like, if I lived here, I would specifically never come to this restaurant again. Yeah, no, fuck that. I hate that shit. Yep, it sucks. Anyways, that's it for the episode. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, we do have more episodes from last week. Uh, and uh, we'll have more episodes coming up. Thanksgiving be damned. We'll be back with more. Gobble, gobble. Yes. Uh, in the meantime, though, please uh, like the video. You click that button, you say, hey, guys. Thanks for working during the holidays. Yeah. We really appreciate it. It's so it. easy. Click, click, you're click, done. Click the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Leave a comment. Reply to a comment. There's lots to talk about today. And uh, and pray for me tomorrow to come up with news stories on a holiday week. I'm sure there's something. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.